Hey guys, still here, and welcome to this tutorial on how to build your own mine. To build your own mine, you're gonna need a few things. First, you're going to need a big asteroid. Now, in this particular sector that I'm in, there are a lot of asteroids, but stuff like this, the standard asteroid, is not something you can use. These asteroids come in various different shapes and sizes, and the ones that you're looking for look like this. You have these also with color. Um, as a weird way of saying that, so it could be, uh, let's say, the color of this one, it could be the color of that one. You don't want that, you want a natural asteroid. It looks like a bunch of asteroids fused together. That's what you're looking for. The second thing you're going to need is a bit of money, because building a, an asteroid mine is going to cost you a bit of money. And that's around 9 million, depending on what sort of mine you want to get. Now the first thing that you need to do is find one of these things these larger asteroids and that is sometimes a bit tricky sometimes you have a sector where you just stumble across one um, in order to get this tutorial recorded I had to scan I think 15 20 sectors and you can usually find asteroid fields when you're looking at the radar for unknown hidden mass signatures this one I actually found inside a sector that's already being controlled by another faction so they can appear there, uh, it is a bit random. In order to find one of these things, or in order to, to get going, you need to get to within 200 meters. So that's 0.2 clicks. Now in this case, my ship is almost the same size as that asteroid. So it's a bit tricky to get it in there. Uh, if you don't have the capability of getting your ship close enough, remember that you can always just press T, that'll allow you to hop into your little mining drone, and that mining drone is then capable of getting there probably quite safe without risking the whole ship. The next step is going to be to actually claim this thing. So I'm getting to uh, I'm getting to 80 meters here, that's really quite close. Interact, claim. Then you press F again when you're still targeting the asteroid. You can now see on the bottom right hand side here that I am now the owner of this asteroid. So now I can interact with it and now I can either found a new mine or I can sell the asteroid. This early game is an interesting way to make money, but this is not what we're here for. I need an actual mine. In order to do that, I'm going to go back into my ship and make sure that the ship is out of the area. Because what's going to happen is um, I'm going to build stuff on this asteroid. And the asteroid mine is then going to start pushing the asteroids away. It's sort of making room for other ships to dock. And that means that it could suddenly start hauling asteroids into my ship. That's not something I want. So make sure that your ship is at a safe distance. I'm now it clicks away. Uh, this mine's going to have to really make a mess in order to get hit over here. So I'm at range. I now once again press F. I press found mine. The cheapest mine that you can get is uh, 6.3 million here for an oil rig. The most expensive one is 12.4 million. It go sorry, 14 million, the zinc mine. Um, <clears throat> I usually go for the middle area, and I usually deploy the noble metal mine. I don't have experience with all of the mines, so I cannot speak to each one of their profitabilities. That's not something that I have thoroughly tested. So that's something that you can still test, and maybe some others have already done the work for us and can comment in the video comments down below. Now I'm going to found a new noble metal mine. This will produce both gold and platinum. So for 9 million I get two resources produced. And those resources are used in quite a few production chains. So that's why I'm going for a noble metal mine. The way that I'm going to set up this mine is for pure profit. You can also have a mine, for example, an ore mine that mines ore or lead or copper. And just have those resources be used in your own little empire, your own factories. That's not the plan here. I want to make sure that I just sell off stuff. So I'm going to go for a noble metal mine. Transform. The game is saying, warning, this action is irreversible. So pick wisely, because you cannot reverse this thing. You cannot suddenly say, oh crap, I don't need platinum. Uh, no, 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 I need silicon. This is your last chance to not set this thing up as the mine that you have selected. I want to proceed, so okay. Please enter a name. Um, gold mine 10, I think this is for me. Now, the thing has transformed into a metal mine. A noble metal mine S. S stands for small. 
You can see that on the bottom right hand side here. It has a hull capacity of 4.16 million. Um, it takes a lot to break up a bunch of rocks basically. Now we're not done yet. Now I need to enter the ship. Press T to do so once you have it selected. It does look weird because I can barely see the asteroid itself. That's how big it is. Only on the map view, the strategic view, I can actually see it. Whereas as I'm trying to look at it like this, it, it just won't work. I'm trying to look around, it just won't work. But that's not really important. It's time to start building on this asteroid. So press B. This is our little asteroid. We're going to need a few things. First of all, we're going to need a cargo bay. Because you'd have to store that mine stuff somewhere. This can be any resource that you like. Um, I currently have a lot of resources, but you don't really need the, the top tier resource for this. Iron is in fact just good enough. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with an iron uh, cargo bay. And the cargo bay is here to make sure that I can stash the products that I have mined. And that um, if the mine is not visited for a while, I'll still have quite a bit of cargo space. So the, let's say the stuff can pile up. How you build these things is really not important. I typically only visit my mines once, and that's when I'm building them. And beyond that, they just run. I just don't have to pay attention to them. So it's sort of sort of set and forget system. Right, so now I have a cargo bay. Great. Next up, I need crew. I need to make sure that there is crew capacity. So I'm going to need crew quarters. The game is saying you sh your ship has no crew. Uh, correct. First off, we're going to have to make sure that they have some place to live. So a small crew quarter or crew quarter, small crew compartment. And this allows me to have 112 crew. That is a lot and you don't need that many. You really only need 6 to 12. So this metal or this crew quarters is just way too big. I think I might be able to get away with this. Yeah, now I have a crew quarters consisting of just 10 rooms or 10 uh, crew slots. All right, so now we have that. The next step is to make sure that ships can actually dock here. Because otherwise, what good is it? Well, what good it could be is that it's a sort of personal mine and that every once in a while you pick up the manual or the resources manually. Would really recommend this. I want to go for profit on this mine, so that's what I'm going to do. Now what I need are these things, the docks. You could set these up here. And I believe, and I still haven't quite figured out how they're supposed to be oriented. These lines over here on the sides, that's the actual docking bay. So if I go out of the build menu, and then <clears throat> zoom out a little, you can see that the asteroid with the two blue lines on it is already producing stuff. That is the resources that are being produced. And yeah, you can see these two lines over here. That's the docking bay. That's the docking area. Unfortunately, I can't quite see. So let's switch to my ship and see if I can then spot where the entrance actually is. I think I built it on the other side relative to where I am now. Where are the docking bays? Might slam into a rock or two here, but that's all right. The ship can handle it. And I have a ton of mechanics who are capable of very quickly fixing up the ship. There. This is the little structure that I have now built. This, this bit over here. Um, and the docking... The docking lights are coming in from over there. <clears throat> so it would seem that the docking area is actually here. It's that little strip that I earlier indicated. Still, that's not quite how I want this thing to be set up. I like my docking bays as a sort of pier, if you will. So I'm rebuilding this one, just uh, tearing it off. I'm going to go for an iron hull. And I'm going to make that fairly long. And when I mean fairly long, I'm looking at 50, 60, something like that. I don't know how the game actually treats this, but my plan is to make a sort of docking pier. Although, again, if you're out of sector, which you are probably going to be for about 90, 95% of the time, you might not really need something like this. You might just need a standard dock. 
Now let's set up a dock over here. And that allows these ships to get... Actually, no. Um, an iron hull. I want to rotate that. I want to set up... One block here. And another block opposite. And then I can have my docks. Those really don't need to be very big. It is just a dock. That's all that it is. So I'm going to have one over there. And one rotated over here. So now ships of various different sizes can get to the mine uh, pretty easily. And you can also have a couple more, let's say... Uh, here. And here. It really doesn't matter how many docks you have. At least I haven't been able to discern any sort of difference. Now, you're pretty much done with your mine as it is for building. But you could add more to it. Um, again, I don't really visit my mines after they're done. If you want to, you can make these things as uh, pretty or as hideous as you like. Again, I for one don't visit them. So for me, it's just setting up the absolute basics. The absolute minimum of the mine. And that's all that I do generally. In this case, I'm actually uh, doing more than I normally would. So I'm sort of covering up these docking ports. Making them a little bit sleeker into the hull. What you can also do is to make sure that this station can defend itself. Right now, it doesn't have a shield generator. And uh, it also doesn't have the required power that it needs. So something I still need to set up is the actual generator. And that's something I can do with iron. Although you could go for solar panels. The solar panel... Uh, let's say if I wanted to do that here, would generate not enough power. But you could do this, for example, over the full length of your pier. Like that. This will generate 1.04 gigawatts. And, uh, well, it also looks fairly decent. Now I'm generating 1.59 gigawatts. And this thing that I still want to add to make sure that my mine's going to be a bit more resistant... Although, to be fair, I've never actually had my mine get attacked, is a Neonite shield generator. I've never had them be attacked, but I don't want to lose the investment that I have going on in this mine. So that's why I'm going to put a shield generator on it. And this shield generator generates currently 4,000 hit points. Of course, the closer that you're going to get to the center of the universe, the bigger of a shield generator you might need. Because the more dangerous the enemies become. So this shield generator can now do 10,000 hit points of shield gen. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the required amount of energy anymore. So let's get another solar panel built over here. And one at the bottom over there. And yeah, it's still not enough. Well, then we're going to have to build solar panels here too. And there. <clears throat> and now I'm generating a bit more than what I need. Okay, so now the station can take a hit. It can not, however, dish it out. What you can do is set up turrets. I currently don't have any in store, but if you have turrets in store, then you can just put your turrets in there. Alternatively, you can build a hangar on it. This is, um, again, potentially overkill, but if you want to, you can. So what I can do over, let's say, maybe above the shield generator here is build a hangar. And then you can have your own little fighter wing in there. You have to set that up manually. I'm not going to go into that here. For that, I would like to refer you to the carrier slash fighter tutorial that I have already created. So this is a way to protect your mine. Again, I've never had these things be attacked, but you never quite know. Okay, next phase of the operation. We need crew. For that, you go to the higher crew button on the right-hand side. It looks like a puzzle piece. What I'm going to need is a couple of miners. Unfortunately, those are not available for hire here. So I'm just going to have to use regular crew. Let's go with 20. And then, of course, I didn't build enough uh, population or enough crew quarters. Oh, by the way, I think you can see that the mine is pushing away an asteroid. Because this asteroid is moving autonomously. So I think that the whole... Uh, tractor beam situation is now operational. Yep, I see more asteroids being pushed out of the way, making sure that other cargo ships can actually get to this mine. Right, again, uh, bigger crew quarters. 
Let's just add a couple more and then fuse those together. Okay, now the ship is... Jeez, the ship is still overpopulated. There, fixed. So now I have my crew. Now I need to actually set up the crew. So you press P when you're looking at the mine or when you're in the mine. And you go to the crew tab. I'm going to need two engineers, eight mechanics and one sergeant. And with the amount of crew that I have, you just click auto assign. And the game is going to figure out where those people need to go. It doesn't always seem to do that immediately. Sometimes you have to exit and then go back in. Because now all the notifications, all the warning lights over here are gone. And with that, the crew has automatically been assigned. And I actually have too much crew on here. So I could even uh, toss out a couple of crew members that I don't need. And make this thing run even more efficiently. Because this is uh, 50 credits every three hours. So if you really wanted to be stringent about the number of crew that you need, uh, you don't need to do this. Uh, you don't need to have this many crew members. Apparently I can run this with just 11 guys or girls, whatever. Okay, next phase, setting up the trade goods section. You can do several things in this screen, and this is the leftmost button, trade goods. The game is going to tell you what do you need to produce. In this case, I don't need anything. It's going to produce two production lines in serial, oh, sorry, in parallel. And that means that um, I gain two platinum and two gold every, well, every tick, I guess, every production cycle. Unfortunately, the prices for gold are 25% lower and for platinum even worse. So I'm not really getting a lot of profit from this mine. The profit per production is 1061. The amount of money spent will remain zero because I'm not going to buy anything with this mine and the amount of money gained is going to tick up over time. Very important here, you do not want to buy goods from others. You don't need to buy anything for this mine. So tick that thing off. Make sure there's no uh, filled in tick box there. Again, don't actively request goods. This is for when you have a factory that actually requires goods, but I don't need that. I do, however, want to actively sell goods. If checked, the station will request traders that will buy the goods when it's full. If unchecked, the goods may sit around until a trader visits randomly. I don't know why this isn't on by default, but okay, we're going to have to tick this one manually as well. Then over here you have the slider that sets the base price of goods bought and sold by this station. A low base price attracts more buyers and a higher base price attracts more sellers. Now, of course, I'm going to have to try and attract buyers. I want people to start buying the stuff that I have. So in order to do that, I have a slightly lower base price relative to other mines in this vicinity. I'm going to reduce that a bit more to let's say minus 5%. Um, this will make sure that you take a bit longer to break even and before you're going to see profits from this mine, but that's okay. Profit per production is uh, 1,122. Oh, sorry, 1,122. Um, you can also, if you want to and if you have the cash for it, upgrade this mine to three parallel productions for 2.7 million. That means that you're going to be producing more of this stuff. So I'm going to be upgrading it. And the upgrades do get progressively more expensive. The first was 2.7 million, the next one's 4 million. The next one's 5.4 million. So now I'm going to be producing four times the amount of resources. Or rather, four items apiece. Uh, I'm not sure if they all run parallel. Yeah, they do. And if I zoom out, you can probably see those bars. Yeah, there we go. Every bar that gets completed is one production cycle that gets completed. So you can see that this really produces quite quickly. Keep in mind that the faster your mine's going to produce, the more cargo space you might need. Because at some point you might be producing more than the AI can actually buy from you. In this case, I already have 53 gold and 53 platinum. These go for an average price of 600. But as we have just seen in the trade goods window, I'm not likely to actually get that. So make sure that um, you well, ideally do your market research and find a position where your mine is going to go and make a lot of money. So you have an area where there is very, very little gold on the market and very little platinum. 
Currently, um, as you can see, the base price is 750 and the base price is 600. That is what you can see on this other screen. That's the average credits. That's not what you're going to get for it. So it doesn't really matter uh, what this says. It only matter what these numbers say. These are the important ones. That is pretty much all you need to do to set up your mine. I now have this mine operational. And in order to show you what you can get with a mine, I'm going to switch to a different one. Uh, let's see, where's my original mine? I think it's this one. Oh, by the way, Gold Mine 10, the one that I'm operating now, with its upgrades, is now considered a large mine. So Noble Metal Mine L. We can switch back to the other gold mine. <clears throat> this, I think, is the original one. By the way, before I forget to mention it, your mine does not need to be inside a sector that's connected by jump uh, by um, jump gates. You can have your mine, well, anywhere, and NPCs will still find it. So it doesn't matter. Okay, here's the mine. <coughs> uh, this mine is, um, again, set up pretty, well, sparsely. I have um, a small crew quarter, or actually I have uh, a cargo bay. I drew this up on a neonite. I have a neonite crew quarters, and I have a neonite shield generator, and a standard neonite generator. On this side, I have my docking bays, which I think are not set up correctly, because they should be rotated. But shows you what I knew back then. And if I go onto the trade goods screen here, you can see that this one is actually in a slightly better position because the platinum demand here is only 15% lower as opposed to 30% lower. And um, it's a mine that has already made 39 million. So let's say that you get an average investment of well, about 12 million, 12 to 13. This thing has already... Um, made 26 million if you subtract that 13 million starting investment from the um, <clears throat> the amount of money that i actually got now interestingly i was saying that i have never been attacked and now i am actually getting attacked so this is something that i have never had happen to a mine apparently you do need defenses because your mines tend to get attacked and this mine however does not have any kind of defense so I'm pretty much screwed because I don't have any ships in the sector which are close enough to help out. Uh, I might lose this mine. But that's not really part of this tutorial. So, a couple things that you're going to need. Summary. Find one of these big rocks. Claim it. Make sure you have the money in order to build the original stuff that you need. So cargo bay, crew quarters, generator, and potentially a shield generator. Make sure that... If it's possible, you build some sort of defenses on it. Could be a turret, could be a hangar, whatever you like, or just have a ship patrol the sector. Make sure you set up your crew, hire the crew that you need, and then set up the amount of goods. Base price, sell goods to others, don't buy goods from others, don't actively request goods, but make sure you actually sell goods. And that's all that you need to do. That's how you set up a basic mine. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. If you have any questions, that's also the place where you can put them. And aside from that, um, good luck with the mine. Go make some money.